Thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this just new opportunity we have to come together, Lord God. Dive deeper into your word. We pray, Lord God, that you would just bless this time we have together. We thank you that uh, we're getting ready to start such an amazing uh, weekend of revival at our church, Lord God. We thank you for the powerful things that's, that are going to take place, uh, the deliverances, the healings, Lord God. Uh, we just know that you're going to move in such mighty ways and do such powerful things. We pray right now, right now we take any fear out of Caitlin, Lord God. Uh, we just pray peace over her. Uh, we pray that it will be your words and not her words that you'll speak through her. It'll be a timely word, Lord God, and it'll speak to all of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Joel. Okay, so for my Devo today, I titled it Flipping Tables. Okay, so this week I was scrolling on Instagram and saw all of the crazy things that the world was doing and getting away with. And today I'm just going to highlight, sorry if I keep looking over, sorry, it's my commuter. So um, I'm just going to highlight three specific things that have really bothered me. Um, not, this may be political, but it, this isn't, I'm not trying to be political or anything. Just my Christian standpoint and what the word of the Lord says. One of them we all probably know this was the Methodist pastor using the phrase a woman and a man that okay I'm just gonna move on um and then Nancy Pelosi banning the use of family names like mother father son and daughter and then lastly is the topic of abortion so obviously you can see through those three um examples of what's going on in the world and what the world's trying to push you can obviously see that these are all involved in Christianity but like non-Christianity they're trying to twist the morals of Christian and what the word uh the word of God says and our laws so if you follow me on Instagram, you can obviously see my stance on things and many more topics. As I usually do, I shared a post from an account that posted these three things, just about those kind of topics. Uh, and what do you know, I got feedback both negatively and both positively. Um, you, uh, you guys can probably imagine the types of things that were ne negatively said over me and over what I was talking about. But in one of the positive ones, I found myself responding with, sometimes you have to be like Jesus and flip tables and clean house. I sat back after reading what I wrote and it hit me. Another confirmation, whether he knows it or not, was Austin. I slid up on Austin's story saying I liked what he had said and he had posted about, um, abortion and I was happy that he's standing up for what he believes in and then he um thanked me and then he went on and said that there was this girl who had um been uh DMing him back and forth and he was getting a lot of backlash from it and I read what she wrote he sent screenshots and it was so unbiblical the world when that when we um when we anger the devil, he comes back. And once we see that attack come back, it's not truth. It's not the word of the Lord. It's saying, oh, it's a woman's body. No, Jesus formed that baby in that mother mother's womb for a reason. And it's just blatant to the enemy's attack and what he's trying to say. Um, and then another confirmation, my third one, was from my mom. Um, so this is Esther 9-1, she sent me. On the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them. But now the tables were turned and the Jews got the upper hand over those who hated them. 
This is my mom talking. I believe, though it doesn't seem like it in our nation, the Lord is about to turn the tables. He loves his people, and just like in the story of Esther, the Lord would turn the tables and save the people. I believe the Lord is going to do the same thing in our nation. We cannot doubt God like the people of Israel did and try to retreat to our place of bondage. She's talking about like when the Jews try to go back to their place of bondage and when they were slaves to uh, Egypt. And Moses was like, no, God brought us this far. He's going to bring us farther. He's going to hold us in his hand. He's not going to leave us out in the wilderness to fend for ourselves. He's a good and merciful king. Um, uh, yeah, that's what said, and it really hit hard and hit my point in my message. Um, now I'm going to go into more of Jesus in the temple. In the temple, the holy place where God dwelt, there were people selling and buying goods. And these goods consisted of money, animals, etc. These things were not as an offering unto God, but they were just um, for gain and, and gain in wealth and human wealth and materialistic things. These merchants and tax collectors had grown comfortable in the courtroom. These people were able to come and settle because the priests and the people in the church allowed them to. They didn't mind that they were taking that where Jesus and where God was supposed to meet them face to face. They allowed the world to come in and settle upon the courtroom. Um, Matthew 21, 12 through 13. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. Instantly when my mind goes, uh, reads that verse, he flipped up the tables where their materialistic things were. And then he flipped up the benches, is where, uh, the benches were where they were sitting and holding that place instead of God being under them. Not under them, but you know, dwelling in that place. To relate it to today, we are allowing people to do evil in the sight of the Lord and giving them excuses for their actions. Christians are acting like sheep and willingly being talked down to by man. Instead, we need to be like lions that don't have to compromise with the wolves. The wolves are the demons and the devil and the enemy trying to come at the wolves. And when we're wolves, yes, we're, I mean, when we're sheep, we're sheep when Jesus directs us and he's our shepherd. But when we are on our own, not on our own, but when we're intercessing and in our prayer closet, we become lions, roaring lions that they, they aren't scared of those um, weak wolves. They aren't scared of those scrappy wolves. We can stand up for our own selves because we know that God has our back and he's watching over us. And then the wolves won't even try to attack us because we're, you know, have such a poise and a posture. Many pastors, not ours, which I'm truly thankful for, are allowing the enemy's perverted mindset into their church. Many have become pro-abortion and have become gay-friendly. These types of things are what happens when pastors are more for the world than they are for Jesus. They crave for there to be a larger audience until there is no more room for the Lord to sit. Or they feel they need, to be, they need a verified blue circle next to their name, but aren't even marked by the Lord. They have replaced intercession with fancy colored lights. They have replaced the calling for appearance. The only person that should be directing us and giving us um, direction is Jesus. No one else. We have to be like Esther and Mordecai who stand up for righteousness and don't bow down to the Hamans of the world. We, but we stand up for righteousness and, don't, um, and we pray and praise and trust Jesus. Lord, let us face the liars like Esther and Mordecai. We need to, we need to like Esther, expose and put shame to the enemy's name. With all that said, we still need to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, self-control, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. We are called to be like Jesus, which means we must be wise in decisions and our situations. We need to know when to be bold and flip tables or when to be wise and bite our tongue. I made a promise to the Lord that I won't back down, that I won't settle, I won't let the enemy have power over my nation and my generation. I am sick and tired of all the Christians who are leaving room and giving up their position and giving it to the world and in the devil's hands. We need to raise up as Christians and fight for our laws and what we believe in. Know the enemy cannot have the unborn babies in our future generations. Know the enemy cannot destroy the family structure that God has set out for a reason. Um, 
and he had cr and why he created man. No enemy cannot take captives captive of the minds of our generation and you cannot take root in them and no and the enemy cannot twist the mindset of pastors who do not um you do and then he doesn't have an ounce in our prayers he doesn't he cannot have one ounce in our prayers we will not settle for closing our prayers with what the world wants we have we will close our prayers with what jesus wants amen means so be it that's why we say it um, so yeah, uh, sorry, I was kind of going really fast, but I'll pray us out. Jesus, I just ask that you place a boldness on us right now in the name of Jesus. Let us stand up for what we believe in. Let us stand up for your law. Let us stand up for what you have planned and not what the world has planned, Lord. I just ask that you take, um, hold of our generation and shake the roots that the enemy has planted in our minds lord in the name of jesus i just ask that you fix those pastors who have uh, succumbed to the world and who have compromised lord i just ask that you remove every compromise that any pastors have made any of our generation has made lord we want to be pure in the sight of your eyes lord we want to be holy in the sight of your eyes lord all praise goes to you all trust goes to you and i just thank you for everyone in this zoom meeting lord i thank you for everyone in unshaken vessels and i god i just i just know that you'll bless us abundantly for what we're doing and we're speaking out your true word in the name of jesus i just ask that you watch over us put the armor of god over us and we just thank you amen hey guys hope you enjoyed that video be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel if you want to stay tuned in for more be sure to hit that notification bell and also follow us on instagram on shaken underscore vessels that's all we have for today thank you